to another edition of the Horner Report. I'm Caroline Gates. And I'm Luke Legrano. Happy holidays, everyone. Caroline, what do we have happening this week? On this episode, we'll profile senior Ryan Nolan, who recently won the Heart of a Giant Award. Chef Harkness has a ball making a special holiday treat. Richie Jablonski gives us an inside look to the boys' basketball team, and the Holmdahl High School Chorus rings in the holidays. That's where we begin our show, Luke. Thanks, Caroline. Last week, Mr. Gecki directed the annual Holiday Chorus and Bell Concert. Mike Atalas was at the concert and followed this report. Mike? Thanks, guys. I'm here at the 2014 Holiday Choral and Bell Concert here at Holmdahl High School. Now, it's the winter, and no one likes the cold and the sleepless nights because you're cold. But everyone loves the Christmas spirit, and the Hanukkah spirit, Kwanzaa spirit, whatever you may celebrate. And the Bell Canto Ringers, Harmony Ringers, Concert Choir, and Women's Choir know exactly that and are here to sing us a bunch of standards that everyone knows. <laughs> I'm here right now with Tori Lacerdo, who is on concert course. How are you doing, Tori? I am doing great. How do you feel you sang tonight? I feel I sing well. I think we all had a really good time, and I think we got everyone in the holiday spirit. Favorite song of the night? My favorite song was from the three jazzy bell carols. <laughs> Since you're a freshman, um, how do you feel you being a freshman, this being a new experience for you? Well, at first, like, it was really overwhelming, and I'm bad with, like, pressure and stuff, but, like, as time went on, it was more fun and stuff, and I got used to it. We go Well, since you, this is your first year, like, and it's a brand new experience for you, how do you feel about all this? Uh, I feel very overwhelmed. Mr. Gecki is very, very good, and he pushes us very hard, and it really brings out the best in us, and we really push ourselves to be the best that we can be. Awesome. Well, the 2014 Holiday Choral and Bell Concert at Holmdahl High is officially over. And we had a lot of fun and can't wait for it next year. Back to you in the studio. Was that three white girls rapping? Caroline, aren't you a rapper? Anyway, this past week, Ryan Nolan was declared the Week 3 winner of a Heart of a Giant Award sponsored by the New York Giants. The award recognized outstanding leadership among high school football players in the tri-state area of New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. Thanks to Ryan's efforts, the Holmdahl football program will be awarded $1,000 from the hospital for special surgery. Mike Giordano has more on this special honor. My name is Ryan Nolan from uh, Holmdahl, New Jersey. I've been playing football since I was five years old and I uh, absolutely love the sport and I'll love it till the day I die. Well, I think I deserve to win this award because not only is this word about me, it's just about the people who have impacted me, who have made me the person I am today. He's very caring, respectful to, to, to coaches, to opponents, to uh, coaches from other teams. He's just like, honestly, like he's a kid that when I think of my son that's 10 years old right now, he's everything that wrapped up in one. I hope my son turns out to be like Ryan. I hear he goes to the gym for like four hours a day. Like, definitely the hardest worker on the team, the strongest kid on the team as well. And he's, and he's a linebacker, so it says a lot about uh, his heart and how hard he worked. Yeah, I definitely admire him. You know, he was, he was like really the head captain on the team this year, and I looked up to him to help me become a better captain. As a teammate and as a friend, Ryan is just always there for you. Like uh, on the field, if something's going wrong, he's gonna he's gonna tell you what you did wrong, but help you. Uh, being a friend, he's just a great friend. Anything you can ask for, he's there. Ryan Nolan won't blow you out of the water with large statistics. However, what he lacks in numbers, he certainly makes up for with his giant heart. Well, when my dad passed away, I was 12 years old, and I believe Ryan was 8. And uh, it doesn't matter what age you're at, it's always a tough thing to go through. It's, you know, a tragedy, but um, even at uh, 8 years old, you know, you might think how many memories does a kid have with his father, but uh, they were extremely close, just like the three of us were. And, uh, you know, we really had the community to 
rally behind us. He never made an excuse about it. Uh, a lot of kids have tough problems in their lives and they, they use it as a crutch. You know, Ryan just kind of took the example of his dad's fight through his life, through his sickness, and put it towards his own success in life. He used it more as a springboard than as a crutch or an excuse. I was with Maddie McDonald the whole night on Friday night. You know, we had a fun time. We were just hanging out, a couple of the guys. And then when I went home, I woke up 8 o'clock in the morning. My mom wakes me up. and She told me what happened to Tammy, and just right away, you just knew I had to be with Maddie. So seven of me and my best friends went straight to the hospital to support Maddie and Mr. McDonald and Mrs. McDonald because they've done nothing but good things for me and just have been looking after me ever since my dad passed. We just knew we had this game. You know, we played for a reason and Tim was in the back of our minds the whole game. We won the game by like three touchdowns. It was just the most incredible feeling in the world. Oh, I'm very, very proud of Ryan. I tell him, uh, I don't tell him enough. I really should tell him a lot more, but um, I know that me and my older brother Tommy are very, very proud of him. And my mom as well, she's very proud of him. The whole heart of the giant thing, I really don't think it's so much about your ability on the field. I don't think it says much about your ability on the field. I think it's more of a character trait. And that's what makes me happy about this, the fact that it says more about you than a person than it does on the football field. Congrats again, Ryan. Speaking of sports, the winter season is tipping off. With a handful of seniors, the boys' basketball team has high expectations in the short conference this season. Richie Jablonski got to talk with the boys about their goals. Thanks, guys. The boys' basketball team has begun practice and has high expectations going into the 2014-2015 season. The opening game is Friday at Monmouth Regional, and I had the opportunity to talk to coach and players about the upcoming season. So, Mr. Devaney, what are the strengths of your team this season? Right now, we're a real hard-working team. Uh, we're a very together team. We play as a team. It, it, it sounds simple, but it takes a lot of work to get everyone on the same page, uh, have everyone uh, really thinking team first rather than me first. So that's our strength right now. We're hard-working, and we play together as a team. All right, here we are with Captain Luke Mayo. Luke, what are your strengths of the team? Uh, my ability to lead and uh, put guys in position to score and uh, you know, just being a leader out there. Uh, what is your personal goal for this season? Uh, personal goal is to win as many games as possible, uh, get into the short conference swimming, hopefully uh, making a run in there. I mean, my, my personal goal is to play the best I can, man. This is my senior year. I just want to go all out, you know. And just uh, and and win as as much as we can. We always want to have a successful season. Maybe make a run in the short conference. You know, I know we'll make the playoffs. Made the playoffs every year since I've been here, so that's a requirement. And I know we can do it. I think our biggest strength is uh, we're all unselfish. You know, there's no uh, there's no me first guys. We're all just looking to win. I think we'll be very competitive. I think when you play us, you're gonna have to play to get a win and uh, I'm real confident in, in, in how we're going to play the way we play the home Dell way. So, what do you want to see in the, the nest this year at a home game? Man, I want everybody to just get loud, have fun, the excitement, like everybody just needs to just get up, get get loud, man, that's it. And just... uh, I want you guys getting rowdy, I know you will. Let's get it. As we heard, the boys have set the bar high for the upcoming season and as far as the home opener, we hope the nest is swarming with buzzing fans on December 22nd against the rival school, Raritan. I'm Richie Jablonski, and back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Richie. Our holiday break is right around the corner. Families across the globe are making some of their favorite holiday dishes. Who better to serve up a holiday dish than our very own Chef Harkness? Isn't that right, Luke? Luke? Where, where's Luke? Where did he go? All right, so for those who don't know, this is Chef Harkness. Chef, thank you again for having us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure, Luke. <laughs> uh, so what have we got today? So today we're making holiday rice balls. Now, to a lot of people, rice balls may not be a holiday treat, but my family, they are held very sacred. I remember growing up, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, and Christmas were the only time my mom would make rice balls. We'd beg her throughout the year, it could be my birthday, um, any special day, and ask her to make rice balls, and they were savored just for the holidays. So when I was asked to do a special holiday recipe this year, I figured what better thing to do, a little tribute to my mom and to all the moms out there, and make rice balls. All right, so uh, let's get started. So what we have here, I have, I cooked about three cups of rice. And by overcooking it, what we're going to do is we add a little bit of extra water into the cooking process. It's going to so make everything stick a little better? It's going to make it all stick a little bit better, Luke. And I have cheese mixed in there also, OK? I don't want to overwork it at this point. I just want to make sure it is well combined. I'm then going to add some tomato paste. This is unseasoned uh, tomato paste. And this is going to give us a nice, uh, a nice reddish color. I tell the kids in school when it looks like a penny vodka 
uh, kind of color, you know you're kind of at your spot. The cheese. For one and a half cups of overcooked rice, we're using two cups of cheese. And you may be saying, wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of cheese. <laughs> um, but it's the cheese that really helps to make these. Now, originally, these were made with chopped uh, ground beef, cooked ground beef. And then my grandmother, at some point, started making vegetarian ones. And as we started to make them, more and more people love the cheese one. So as you can see, the rice is overcooked. Okay, and we're starting to see that nice kind of kind of penne vodka kind of color to that. Okay, so we're gonna stop right there. Okay, all our cheese and our tomato paste has been mixed in. Now I'm Italian, so I know how to make rice balls, but for the people watching at home, give us the, uh, give us the lowdown. Okay, so we wanna start by uh, taking a small amount of rice, not too big, and what's really important is you really wanna wet your hands a little bit. It's gonna help uh, for the rice not to stick to your hands. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make one ball, and not to over roll them. You'll see a little bit larger than a golf ball. Okay, Luke, get a good handful of breadcrumbs right now. Just like this. Okay, and I'm gonna toss this in our egg whites. Now, egg whites are gonna be well beaten. Okay, you may lose your shape a little bit. Okay, right in. Okay, right over the top. Just pull right yep. over the top. Right over right. the top. And then we're gonna shake our, our breadcrumbs around. Okay, and what comes out is a rice ball. Okay, and we can push those right onto there. All right. All right, so how long have you been making these for? You know, making these as long as I can remember. Um, I started with my grandmother and my mom making them, and then uh, unfortunately my mom passed away in 1997, and um, this became you know, an even bigger tradition in my family. Uh, my sister and I, and my brothers, we argue over who makes the best rice balls, <laughs> and we make them as good as mommy made them. All right, so it looks like we're all set. Yeah, we have oil on, and you want to bring your oil up to about 350 to 375 degrees. Uh, the best way to tell that is just take a little bit of breadcrumbs and add them in. The breadcrumbs should start frying right away. You should not see smoke. Oil does not boil. Oil gets hot, it smokes, and then it'll catch on fire, so you have to be very careful. I want to go ahead and want to place our, our rice balls, and we want them to actually touch, touch the oil as we drop them in. Okay, we're going to be using a tong to get them out. Okay, you could use a wooden spoon. Okay. If you notice that your oil is a little hot, you could turn it down just a little bit, give it a little shake as they go through. Okay. They smell amazing, man. Uh, they come out even more. We want a nice golden brown color. So we can go ahead and, and check them out as they're going through. And as you can see, they go, they go rather quickly. Okay. Remember, everything is cooked inside, so we're just kind of uh, browning the outside, getting the rice ball nice and crispy. Man. The first batch of, of rice balls. As I mentioned before, my favorite part of the rice ball is eating the rice ball. So Luke, let's let's dive in. Let's go for it. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Cheers. Here's to you and yours. Happy holidays from all of us here at Homedale High School. Oh my god. Man, it's good. Oh my god, it's so good. I wish you guys were here, I really do. Mm. I'm back. Those were really good, Caroline. I wish you were there to try some. Well, I'm just saying, next time chef's making food, I'm helping out, and you can man the anchor desk. <laughs> I'll think about it. Well, this coming April, the TV and Film Society will be hosting their annual film festival, where students submit their own short films for prize money. It's time to get those films started. Here's the film club with a brief but inspiring message. Do you want to make a short film? Come on, let's go record. The greatest mini film of all. We'll have a ball. And, and blow, blow them all away. away. We really need some entries. Or it'll be a mess. I really wish you try. Do you want to make a short film? Yes, it has to be a short film. Not too long. That uh, that singing could use some work. Um, I, I'm not disagreeing, but Lolia was pretty good. Lolia was all right. I don't really think she should ever sing again. No, I'm kidding. Great job, guys. I'm super excited. I really hope it snows so I can make a snowman. Caroline, do you want to build a snowman? No. 
I want to make a short film. I like that attitude. <laughs> well, that looks like all the time we have for this episode. I'm Luke Legrano. And I'm Caroline Gates. From all of us who work on the Horn Airport, we wish you very happy holidays. And we can't wait to see you next year, where, as always, we'll bring you the week's best at HHS.